so that I'm rocking with everything that we need to do what needs to be done. So that's all I'm trying to do is what needs to be done. Uh, maybe, maybe putting it up this way. Oh, there we go. That might work for a little bit. Willie Owens, good to see you. Man, this is the outline. Uh, I take a few days. I ask the ancestors for more truth. The elders call me up, and then we politic. Hey, sis, that's Keisha Green. That's my sister. I love her with my soul. Uh, Derek Smith, good to see you. Uh, I don't want to mess up your name, Tommy Greeneri. Good to see you. Uh, Tina Lynch, documents on the way. When we send y'all documents, and we're getting ready to drop it into the little blue box, we take a little video to show you the box number. Uh, so you know where it got sent from. And if they messing with y'all mail, y'all go down to the post office and get on them. Oh, what do we have here? I just posted a Treasury Direct Account check on my Facebook. And uh, that shows the Nationals it's possible to be receiving monies from the Treasury Direct. So y'all eat that up, share it up. And then we could get the processes down on our uh, 7 o'clock Wednesday conference call. Let's see here. Uh, we get right in. Because this thing lengthy. And I don't know if y'all going to be able to rock with me like this. So y'all go ahead and share it up. We are in every way, shape, and form getting ready to. Bang. Oh, come on with it. Number one. Outline of the motion. These matriarchs, 13 of them, you should have 13 commission consuls in your republic, and you should be enforcing this constitution and these treaties. In your republic, if you cannot get 13 people to agree on something, and then if other people are not obeying to whatever's going on, y'all indict that person or move them out the way and find an agreeable person, then we should be okay in our republics. We got some problems if we can't get together a few heads and hearts to get some things done. If man were to be included, he would have been, as in this example, 7 U.S.C. 136D, animal. The term animal means all vertebrate and invertebrate species, including but not limited to man, other mammals, birds, fish, and sailfish. Oh, this is the law. And we're going to be banging today. If y'all share this up, y'all write this down, y'all get these codes, y'all use these truths and these affidavits and enforce, enforce these actual protocols in your republic. You ain't got to get up and be an economic debt slave. Going to enslave yourself to somebody else's estates, thoughts, ideals, creations, and all of that other energy that you dispensing. Woo! Come on. And Sally Mae and Jimmy Dean and Little Mama's Cookies and all of that. Y'all think them families real. Yeah, right. It's a marketing scheme. Y'all better get with it. <laughs> Uh, Somali B. My Bay, good to see you. Raymond Price, good to see you. In the Morse American Consulate, Central Amexum group, in that file section, there are PDF affidavits for every national to be able to write out and fill out and send themselves to wherever they need to. Now, the hours of consul, the printer, the paperwork, the driving and the gas to and from the post office, the uh, lawful counsel, the lawsuits, the hours it takes to be uh, dealing with these de facto courts, uh, typing up these affidavits and these writs. Labor and energy, it costs. And if you ain't got the fiat, then you better send something. Send me a meal. Send me some food. Send me a spiritual something. I need something up out of you in reciprocation for the energy of love that I'm pouring into you. Because that's how we increase. Woo! Some from you, some from me. The term person means any individual partnership, associate, association, corporation, or any organized group of persons, whether incorporated or not. I really thank you consuls and you nationals around the land who understand support and are now pouring into this individual who's doing the work. I appreciate y'all.
Uh, Laws of Nations, Book 3, Article 15, Enlisting in Foreign Countries. The man who undertakes to enlist soldiers in a foreign country without the sovereign's permission and, in general, whoever entices away the subjects of another state violates one of the most sacred rights of the prince and the nation. This crime is distinguished by the name of kidnapping or man-stealing and is punished with the utmost severity in every well-regulated state. Creates a natural reversion of enemy of the state within the granted states. You see, man-stealing, y'all, I understand. Everybody knows that the matriarch is God and through her comes the soul. They are severing the power of the man. Without the power of the masculine, where will the protection for the feminine energies come? While our men are in prison, while our men are confused about their identity, while our men are confused about their um, duties and responsibility to the matriarch, while our men, while our men, while our men are dying. Now, everyone knows to respect the matriarch. Well, can we please have some support of the masculine energy on these particular uh, soil and land? Please. Woo! Because I get out there. Y'all y'all protect and support and edify me, you matriarchs. And I will get out there on these streets. And I'm going to be protecting y'all's investment, which is the suns and the seeds of the earth. Woo! Love you full-time, mom, for taking care of your seeds and not allowing them to be brainwashed into the um, John D. Rockefeller miseducation camps. Uh, U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 8. Woo, I'm feeling real serious today. I want to bang on these particular tribunals, these false courts, with the truth and the real law. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. Now, I got another article somewhere. Um, on consular relations that show us how we can get the states as a tribunal of 13 to be paying us for doing consular relations through credit, through FRN, through uh, uh, land, through homes, through grants, uh, anything. So these is laws. We, we just, look, is an intelligible tone. You think about what an intelligible tone is. How did Noble Drew Ali encourage these people with the intelligible, intelligible tone to give to him the land grant to three quarters of the million, three quarter millions of the earth, acres of the earth? How? He didn't go in there demanding these people. He didn't go in there, oh, I'm, I'm the heir and you the slave and all of that. I, I wasn't there, so I can't say what he did and didn't do. But a favorable reply, they sitting at the table eating with you, buddy. They sitting at the table with you and you charming them. They laughing. They enjoying your company. And they called that man noble. Gave him the land patent. Sent him on his way to deliver his people. Woo! Come on with it, baby. To define... uh. This is U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 8. To define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the law of nations, also termed common law of war, as per Hadman Brief, USCA case number 11-1257. Man, y'all better research and get these laws and put them in your books and start uh, enforcing them. Hey, Mr. General, Mr. Policy Enforcer, can't you see this USC code right here on this piece of paper while you're talking to me right here? This is your duty. Oh, you forgot about your oath? Let me print that out for you. Matter of fact, I think I got a copy in my back pocket of your oath. Oh, don't you remember this law that you swore oath to? Oh, you on this land, reaping the benefits. Oh, yes it is, baby. Uh, vibrational, that unconditional love all throughout this earth. This is how I, for the past 28 years of trauma and people hurting me, have conquered the world. And that means myself. Um, I did it through unconditional love. Woo, baby. They wish they knew the secret. Oh, come on with it. I'm trying to give it to y'all. <laughs> to declare war, grant letters of marque and reprisal, and make rules concerning captures on land and water. Every claim of ownership makes one an enemy because the claim threatens the assets of the trust. Come on with it. U.S. Constitution, Article IV, Section 3. New states may be admitted by the Congress into this union, but no new state shall be formed or erected within the jurisdiction or of any other state, nor any state be formed by the junction of two or more states, 
or parts of states without the consent of the legislators of the states concerned as well as the Congress. Now, we know that the Congress is now a corporate entity operating under codes and statutes. So who's the new Congress? You and your 13 commission consuls for your consulate. That's the new Congress. Who's legislating y'all in your republic? You. You're writing the trust. There should be a mother or a matriarch or a scribe in your family. They should be writing everything concerning your family and what's going on. Who the wealth gets delegated to. Who the administrator of the estate's going to be when you uh, transfer into the ethers. Uh, what you want done with everything. Come on, man. Unless you want the state to continue to write your will for you. Oh. Or you want the... Um, the churches to continue to have the pastor give some nonchalant obituary that he done got out of some pastor handbook offline. Come on, man. It needs to be a lot more meaningful. Woo! The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations. In our case, our tribunal of 13 people. Respecting the territory or the property belonging to the United States and nothing in this Constitution shall be so construed as to prejudice any claims of the United States or of any particular state. Woo! U.S. Constitution, Article V.I. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, baby. And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. The judges, they didn't say de facto or de jure. It say all judges. Okay? It didn't specify. So that put it under the scope of all judges. Got to adhere to the fact that the supreme law of the land is the treaties in the Constitution. That's If you calling yourself a judge, grand sheiks of the temple, judges, made to uh, call to enforce and legislate law, uh, pastor, preacher, or teacher in some type of uh, church. Uh, Moorish American consulate, OT Bay, appointed judge by the people. Uh, whoever you are, if you professing to be a judge, then the supreme law of the land, your reference point, your principle is the Constitution and the treaties. That's it. And the individual private trust that you create between your estate and another estate of another individual. That's it. Woo, come on with it. Libra Code Article 1. A place, ditch, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation. Under the martial law of the invading or occupying army, whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. Woo! That's why you under military young occupation. You need to learn how to operate under military occupation until the military occupation is no longer. Oh, come on with it. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. Army regulation 840-10 and 8-2. Flagstaff head, finio. The flagstaff head, finio, is the decorative ornament at the top of a flagstaff. This does not restrict the display of a, flag, a state flag from a staff bearing a state device when national or other state flags are, dis are displayed from adjacent flag staffs. And we should see them flying everywhere. We should see our flags flying everywhere. On our cars, on our windows, in our yards, coming off our porches, uh, hanging off our capes and flags. Uh, I do not care. Our flags should be everywhere. Woo! Come on with it. Them insignias mean something. You sealed to the day of redemption. You got to understand those seals mean something. Penetrate the conscious mind. Woo! Did y'all see? Uh, understand about the propaganda in the war machines back in the 50s where these scientists, European scientists, was hired to figure out how to psychologically destroy you. Oh, y'all ain't see those experiments and those scientists learning how to trick and deceive your mind and create within you an illusion based on what they tell you and what they show you. Oh, you better get off that TV, that tell eye vision. <laughs> yeah, that tell some lies to your vision. <laughs> your vision being lied to in that telecommunication center. <laughs> Look.
However, the army does not provide such devices. Only the following finios are authorized on the flag used by army organizations. Eagle, presidential flag staff. Spearhead, the spearhead is the only device used with army flags. Acorn, markers and marking pennants, flag staff. Ball, outdoor wall mounted for advertising or recruiting. Woo! Labor Code Article 7. Martial law extends to property and persons, whether there are subjects of the enemy or aliens to that government. Anderson's Dictionary of Law, 1893. Birth, see abandoned to, the act of a parent in exposing an infant of tender years, usually under seven, in any place with intent wholly to desert it. Birth record equals abandoned infant. Woo! Gratitude to you, Amo Tinkan. And Wednesday, 7 o'clock, on our um, Amun Ra website, there is a free conference call, 7 o'clock Wednesday. And we get on there, and we love up on each other as a family, because that's what we are. We're all blood, baby. And to all of you Europeans, and Albion's contacting me, yes, if the love, unconditional love of the Al Moroccan Empire um, appeals to you more so than being a 14th Amendment citizen of the corporate de facto United States. I am obliged and happy that you want to support and be a part of our empire and government. I will gladly naturalize you into this government by way of lawful paperwork and documentation. Love you very much and thank you for uh, supporting this family in the nation, in the world. Whoa, we love you. Yeah. Birth record equals abandoned infant. Black's Law, second edition, uh, edition, birth, the act of being born or wholly brought into separate existence. 1 U.S.C. 8, person, human being, child, and individual, as including born alive infant. A, in determining the meaning of any act of Congress or any ruling, regulation, or interpretation of the very admin various administrative bureaus and agencies of the United States, the word person, human being, quote, child, quote, and individual, quote, shall include every infant member of the species Homo sapien who was born alive at any stage of development. So for every live birth, there is a corresponding infant. Woo! And the um, pro-choice activists going to have a real tough time with that one. <laughs> Sesta QVX, 1666, 1707. Two. Oh, that's number one. Did I get you on that? Yep. Number two. If such infant, tenant for life, appeared to be in some place beyond sea, party, prosecuting such order may send over to view such infant. And if guardian will not produce such tenant for life, then he or she is to be taken as dead. Oh, somebody just told us the truth. If it appears afterward in any action to be brought that such tenant for life was alive at the time of the order made, then he or she may re-enter and have action for rent. Ooh, really? Well, I think I just re-entered. I need my action for rent, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Proviso for guardian who shall make it appear that due endeavor has been used to procure the appearance of such infant and tenant for life. Guardians, trustees, Holdings over without consent of remainder man deemed trespassers and damages. Look, this is what correcting your status does. Hey, you said I was dead. How did you say it? By all of this stupid paperwork and all of these laws and these codes and whatever your declarations was. Hey, that's some false stuff right there. I'm not no corporation and I ain't dead. Here's some lawful paperwork and laws concerning the real truth and this reflects the truth and now you read it. Just like I had to read it. Oh, thank you for obliging me in the truth. Because you have to legislate and write, inscribe into law the same creative word as everybody else does concerning the exercising of your own personal will. Woo, come on with it. Articulate yourself, baby. Yeah. Supreme Court case of Republic versus Gloria Bermudez Lorino. January 19, 2005, 449, SCRA 57, the Philippines. Declaration of presumptive death is a legal fiction created by law. Man, come on with it. Get this teacher. Anderson Dictionary of Law, 1893, fiction. That which is feigned, assumed, pretended. The legal assumption that is true, which is or may be false. An assumption of an innocent and beneficial character. 
made to advance the ends of justice, an allegation in legal proceedings that does not accord with the actual facts, and which may be therefore and which may therefore be contradicted for every purpose except to defeat the beneficial purpose for which the fiction is allowed. Okay. There has to be a way for them to illegally transfer the wealth of your estate to the wealth or to their estate. The purpose for which the fiction is allowed is to get your wealth into they bloodline. Now, when we correct our status, your wealth, after you put all of your hereditaments in trust, can be um, redistributed back into your own fo uh, family and bloodline. Fictions of law are highly beneficial and useful, especially as no fiction extends to work and injury. Especially as no fiction extends to work and injury. Uh, Grand Sheik. And went through the you to hear and breathe and hear your message of truth. Once again, where is the cohesiveness? Uh, Grand Sheik's all over the land agreeing with me that the consulates are to be existing in the land. Uh, Prophet Noble Jew Ali 1099 affidavit that I just read two days ago say, uh, my consulate. He's speaking of consulates. So this is the cohesiveness between the people. Now, the 1961 Vienna Convention say that um, consulates exist by way of mutual consent. So there we go again, the cohesiveness of this republic concerning the enforcement of law by way of using the consulates as a venue to do so. Uh, fictions of law are highly beneficial and useful, especially as no fiction extends to work and injury. The proper operation is to prevent mischief or remedy and inconvenience that might result from a general rule. The maxim is, in fiction, juris semper subsistes, equitas, in a fiction of law, equity always subsists. A legal fiction is consistent with justice, but not admitted, where life, liberty, or personal safety is in jeopardy. Fiction makes several corporations out of what is really one, in order to give each state control over the charter it grants. Oh, Akili, Akila Atimorel. Yeah, very, very open. Yes, in the groups, all the files is downloaded. We have, um, we have somebody go to the Cook County Recorder of Deeds office and get every single one uh, of Noble Jew Ali's filings. And from his writings, we're communicating, at least from this particular consulate and principal. Because at the end of the day, when somebody says something to me concerning what Noble Drew Ali did or did not do, I have his actual affidavits that have been filed and recorded in the Cook County Recorder's Redeeds office. So I just go and resource them when I'm uh, in question. Ooh, can't get something for nothing. Amen to that. Um, 341 U.S. 114.71 S.C.T. 670. Whatever might have been Pewee's losses, had it been left free to exercise its own business judgment, the crucial fact is that the government chose to intervene by taking possession and operating control. By doing so, it became the proprietor and in the absence of contrary arrangements, was entitled to the benefits and subjects to the liabilities which that status involves. Oh, you're the heir. That's a status. Oh, the heir has benefits. Like what? All of the natural resources of the land. Oh, whatever interest someone accrues from doing commerce on your land, that's a benefit that should be given to you free of charge. What are they giving you for being here? Oh, better go look at what you can get. Oh, I was enti was entitled to you according to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1787. Corpus Juris Secundum, Estates, Section 1. In its primary and technical sense, estate refers only to an interest in land, a usufruct in the right of using and enjoying and receiving the profits of property that belong to another. Oh, what the usufruct are you doing, buddy? Oh, you better get all my land, buddy. <laughs> yeah, reaping these benefits. Ain't told me nothing about these hundreds and hundreds of years. of. Oh, look at all of this. And these matriarchs and these patriarchs just sit around and they watch. Generation and decade and decade, uh, all of the generations of wealth just being given to the states. 
all over. They ain't wrote nothing up. They ain't said, hey, this little piece of rock belonged to me. Oh, these minerals in this river belong to me. So if you come up in order to use it, you're going to have to talk to me about trade and increasing. Ain't none of that. All the people died. We ain't got nothing. We ain't nothing. We don't know who we are. So I guess uh, we just going to let everybody else have everything. What? Oh, where you at, family? You better band together. Uh, I'm I'm making an effort to stay with you more. I am uh, traveling at the speed of light at almost all times. So, um, I need to give you this uh, code, mathematical code to this frequency. Woo! It's called the five pillars of light, baby. Land. The people of a nation. Land. The people of a nation. District or region. Standard dictionary definition. Corpus juris secundum. Infants. Section 166. Oh, did somebody say sets the QV at 1666 minus the one six, six, six. Oh, the mark of the beast. Oh, the corporate um, social security number and birth certificate. Oh, the papal bulls. Oh. Yes, it is earned. Yes. And freely given to those who value and um, support the work. Anyone who intermeddles with the property of an infant without authority is liable to account thereafter. Oh, did you hear that? Let's walk up into these tribunals or whenever some type of judge or whatever says something to us. Corpus Juris Secundum Infants, Section 166. Anyone who meddles with the property of an infant without authority is liable to account thereafter. Account to who? The one who is now no longer an infant. Oh, a competent heir. Oh, no longer a child. Able to make decisions for your own estate. You're actually recording the history of your own womb and bloodline. It means something to you. It's valuable to you now. The actual recording of your history. Oh, this is baby so-and-so. And according to the prophetic um, history of our family, this person is projected to do this with the nation. Oh, y'all better legislate and write yourself into creation. Which your will. Initiation of trust administration. 1 USC and 204. Codes and supplements as evidence of the laws of the United States and District of Columbia. Oh, y'all better get this and share it on up. 1 USC 204. Oh, got y'all. In all courts, tribunals, and public offices of the United States at home or abroad of the District of Columbia and of each state, territory, or insular possession of the United States. United States Code. The matter set forth in the addition of the Code of Laws of the United States, current at any time shall, together with then current supplement, if any established prima facie law of the United States, general and permanent in their nature, enforce on the day preceding the commencement of the session, following the last session, the legislation of which is included, Provided, however, that whenever titles of such codes have been enacted into positive law. Oh, listen. The text thereof shall be legal evidence of the laws therein contained in all courts of the United States, the several states and the territories and insular possessions of the United States. What did Jesus say to us? Oh, we're going to be listening. Are we hearing? Are we listening? And are we obeying? To listen or to hear in Hebrew means obey. If you take obey in Hebrew, it means to listen, vice versa. So you got to be hearing and obey. This just said, prima facie law, any Supreme Court decision, the text of it shall be legal evidence of the laws therein contained. So you find the matter adjourned in any Supreme Court case, and that stands as law in any court. It doesn't matter if it's an Article Three or lower court. In all courts, it stands as law. Woo! So start looking at the Supreme Court cases and enforcing them. Two Statute 153. An alien may be admitted to become a citizen of the United States in the following manner and not otherwise. Keep in mind Article 7 of Lieber Code. One, he shall two years at least prior to his admission declare before a proper court his intention to become a citizen of the United States. Now we're talking in terms to um, indigenous or nationals or naturalized into the Al Moroccan government in the bloodline of the Moors. To the, to the potentate or sovereignty of which he may be at the time a citizen or subject. Uh, he shall, at the time of his application to be admitted, declare on oath 
before someone of the court above specified that he will support the Constitution of the United States and that he absolutely and entirely renounces and abjures all allegiance and fidelity to every foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty, and particularly by name to the prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of which he was before a citizen or subject, which proceeds, which proceedings shall be recorded by the clerk of the court. Oh, y'all thought y'all was finna get me done. This is only page four that we're on. I'm glad y'all rocking with me today. Share this thing on up. Go get you something to drink uh, and absorb this law. Yeah. When I just had to put this thing up to keep this charge on because I didn't charge my phone up before I got on here. So hopefully this thing stays up the way that it needs to. Otherwise, I'm going to have to come back. Up. Or sovereignty of which he was before a citizen or subject with proceedings shall be recorded by the clerk of court. You can't be so You already are sovereign. You are sovereign. Every single soul, every single conscious mind who is exercising their own decisions. Every single day you wake up and you say, I got to breathe. Oh, your body just breathed. I got to blink. Oh, you're blinking right now. Oh, I got to close my eyes. I got to go to sleep. Oh, my body's hungry. I got to feed myself. You feed yourself. You are sovereign already. In control of your own will so there's no such thing as paperwork making you sovereign or a sovereign citizen or something like that you are sovereign so whatever concepts these people is walking around with you own your own self <laughs> outside of your uh beautiful wonderful connection uh with the divine matriarch of the earth she ain't even say she owned you that's so funny how people think that they have rights to one another when the creator of the universe said, hey, child, go be free. What you think free will is? Free will is you ain't got to do what the parent said. You can, as a mature adult, make your own decision. And the parent ain't got nothing to do what goes on with the consequences, the natural consequences of what happened to you when you make your own decision as heir or image of God. Image of own most high consciousness. Whoa, come on with it. And we still letting the pastor. Then when you get healed by the spiritual application of the desire of your own vibrational frequency of your mind, your heart, and the other minds and hearts vibrating with you. And then you go eat that fat cheeseburger and all of those GMOs. Talking about you want to heal, then just do what's natural to remain healed. Your bodys That's what your body's created for. Whoa, go eat some fruits and some vegetables <laughs> and drink some good fresh water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it shall be made to appear to the satisfaction of the court admitting such alien that he has resided within the United States five years at least and within the states or territory where such court is at the time held one year at least and that during the time he has behaved as a man of good moral character attached to the principles of the Constitution of the United States and well disposed to... Uh, to the good order and happiness of the same. But the oath of the resident shall in no case be allowed to prove his residence. But the oath of the residence shall in no case be allowed to prove his residence. What proves your residence? Your blood. That's what proves your residence. Oh, look at the difference. I'm a national. I'm a national. Here's some paperwork. Here's some documents. Uh, just your conscious mind saying that. And then all of your family and all of the republic saying it with you. Oh boy, they split their ears when we talk to them because we don't talk to them on the phone with like one or two documents. We send them emails with about 200 people involved. All 200 consuls can see that email and whatever's going on with these de facto judges. We get on the phone, we got them on three way. We listen and take the belligerent. We'll jump in the phone call on them. They be all scared and wondering what's going on. Oh, it's a judge on the line? Oh, yeah, buddy, you ain't think that we didn't know this law. Look, it's a time when new more is going to come open. Come, come into the movement with their eyes what wide open, buddy. Woo, come on with it. What's this? This was the courts deciding the case. Where did I go with this? Four, three, Law of Nations, Book 2, 104, Protection Due to Foreigners. The sovereign ought not to grant an interest into his state. Oh, come on with it. The sovereign ought to not grant an interest into his state for the purpose of drawing foreigners into a snare. As soon as he admits them, he engages to protect them as his own subjects and to afford them perfect security as far as depends on him. Accordingly, we see that every sovereign who has given an asylum to a foreigner considers himself no less offended by an injury done to the latter than he would be 
by an act of violence committed on his own subject. Hospitality was in great honor among the ancients and even among barbarous nations, such as the Germans. Those savage nations who treated strangers ill, that Scythian tribe, who sacrificed them to Diana, were universally held in abhorrence. And Grotius justly says that their extreme ferocity excluded them from the great society of mankind. All other nations had a right to unite their forces in order to chastise them. Extension of hospitality, grant of estate. B.C., with the natural reversion attached. The natural reversion. Hey, this birth certificate, where's mine at? Matter of fact, let's go into it. I done sold my social security number. I done sold my birth certificate. I sold everything about my life on these nine months of live feed. So I don't care about none of that. And people seeing or whatever, because I'm transparent. And so is my love. I'm going to show y'all exactly how to help y'allself with this birth certificate right here. Share it on up. Okay. First, please don't go authenticate a falsified document. If you look at your, um, let's see, this is the uh, non-certified version. Did you know that the, certif the non-certified version has all the information on it and the certified version ain't got nothing on it? What? <laughs> the certified copy ain't got nothing on it, but the non-certified one that's hidden uh, with dust gathering on it got all the information on it. First... You go get your birth certificate, it's going to say stuff like uh, inside corporate limits, specify, yes or no, right there, inside corporate limits, specify, yes, oh, really, it's a uh, identity, race of father, black, black ain't no race, it's a race of mother, black, black ain't no race, what, that's the status, you some liars, so I'm going to take this non-certified copy, and go authenticate it. Now I authenticated that I'm black. And my mom and my daddy's black. <laughs> Before you authenticate it. If you're going to go this route. First amend it. Okay. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Moorish American. Or Moabite. Or Asiatic by descent. And change and change and change. Under corporate, uh, corporate limits. No. Da 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 da. Then authenticate it. Now you have an authentic birth record from your, your mouth. And the mouth of the corporate state who created the instrument. You force them to be honest or make the instrument on, honest so that you can perfect your securities later on. If that's what you want to do and use it in the nations. Ooh, to trade with the nations. And amongst others. We need to start using one another. We have everything we need. Along with one another. Uh, I call up people all the time. They got food, groceries, nutrients, uh, ingredients, uh, uh, teaching, uh, everything that I need. So why am I going to these corporations for anything to work, to create, to treat with, to sit up under, to listen to, to get a check from? Why? Woo. What's up, Keanu Scott? Love you. Thank you for your poetry. Very inspired by it. Uh, Law of Nations, book two, 105, their duties from a sense. Of, this is the law of nations. All right. From a sense of gratitude for the protection granted to him and the other advantages he enjoys. The foreigner ought not, to, ought not to consent himself with barely respecting the laws of the country. Now, we're talking about the occupying forces on our land right now. This applies to them. They are the foreigners. What up, Boosie Boo? Joy, uh, Dre Lloyd, uh, you patriarchs, heirs to your bloodline. You're supposed to be healing up these wounds and these matriarchs. How you do that is you get everything in trust. Everything that y'all own and trust. And y'all sit down at the table and treat with the old heads of your family about what needs to be done with the estates and the administrators of it. Who are your other family members and your best close to friends that you can keep in trust. Uh, the foreigner ought not to consent himself with barely respecting the laws of the country. He ought to assist it upon occasion and contribute to its defense as far as as far is consistent with his duty as a citizen of another state. We shall see elsewhere what he can and ought to do when the country is engaged in a war. But there is nothing to hinder, hinder him from defending it against pirates or robbers, against the ravages of an inundation or the devastation of fire. Can he pretend to live under the protection of a state to participate in a variety of advantages that it affords and yet make no exertion for its defense, but remains an unconcerned spectator of the dangers to which the citizens are exposed? So you rolling around. Ooh, and you turn around and you see this corporate person, policy, policy enforcer jamming on your people and you pull out a phone. What? Oh, buddy, you better run up over there. 
You better yank that uh, policy enforcer off of your people. Look, you better use his own cuffs. I don't care. If you allow it, then it should be happening to you. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Um, not so. It say, all of you have a responsibility because you're participating in the advantages of our own land. If you's a foreigner, you a foreigner if you a 14th Amendment citizen. If you black, you a foreigner too. If you a foreigner, it's your responsibility as you're uh, enjoying the privileges of this estate to defend it and its citizens and the nationals. Woo, come on with it. Laws of Nations, book two, 106. To what burdens they are subject. One second. Page five of 16. Share it on up. Get your water, get your food. Come back. Send me some love energies. And the way to gift for this teaching to keep on going is located in the bio section. This is the alkaline water. Mm -hmm. I drink one of those every two days. Yes. To what burdens they are subject. Law of Nations book two. He cannot indeed be a subject to those burdens. That have only a relation to the quality of citizens, but he ought to bear his share of all the others being exempted from serving in the militia and from paying those taxes destined for the support of the rights of the nation. He will pay the duties imposed upon provisions, merchandise, and in a word, everything that has only a relation to his residence in the country or to the affairs which brought him thither. Hmm. Law of Nations, book two, 107. Foreigners continue members of their own nation. <clears throat> the citizens of the subject of a state who absents himself for a time without any intention to abandon the society of which he is a member does not lose his privilege by his absence. He preserves his rights and remains bound by the same obligations being received in a foreign country in virtue of the natural society, the communication and commerce which nations are obliged to cultivate with each other preliminary 1112 book 221 he ought to be considered there as a member of his own nation and treated as such and a couple more pages we're going to get down to how the states owe us and we're also going to get into the um, consular relations this is real time uh, 2017 2018 laws that have been passed and wrote and legislated and agreed upon by the peoples of the earth these particular consular relations documents, diplomatic relations. <clears throat> Law of Nations, Book 2, 108. The state has no right over the person of a foreigner. So even so, if they are treating you like a foreigner of the corporation, United States, they still ain't got no rights over you. Look. <laughs> uh... The state which ought to respect the rights of other nations, who's the state, United States Service Corporation, what rights and who's the nation, the Al Moroccan nation, all the children, the Asiatics in Al Morocco, in America right now, that's a nation of all of us who can't find it in our hearts to figure out how to unite, we're still a nation, divided nation. <laughs> that state, the United States Service Corporation, still have to respect the rights of us, the nation. Even though they're occupying our land right now. And we like, duh, it's okay. You can just be here and do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in general, those of all mankind cannot arrogate to herself any power over the person of a foreigner. Who, though he has entered her territory, has not become her subject. The foreigner cannot pretend to enjoy the liberty of the living in the country without respecting the laws. If he violates them, he is punishable as a, dis a disturber of the public peace and guilty of a crime against the society in which he lives but he is not obliged to submit like the subjects to all the commands of the sovereign and if such things are required of him as he is unwilling to perform he may quit the country Woo! now listen if you mr european mr united states service corporation member mr black man mr and mrs christian or whoever else don't like it then you can quit the country that mean, oh, baby, I love saying this. You can go home. <laughs> oh, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. Come on with it. <laughs> Silence. 
If you was practicing your art, you would be able to know your way around in the dark. Silence, baby. <laughs> Where my grandmama's buttermilk biscuits at? He is free at all times to leave it. Nor have we a right to detain him, except for a time and for very particular reasons, as, for instance, an apprehension in wartime, lest such foreigner acquainted with the state of the country and of forfeited places should communicate. Oh, five should communicate. Six, his knowledge to the enemy. From the voyages of the Dutch to the East Indies, we learn that the kings of Korea forcibly detain foreigners who are shipwrecked, shipwrecked on their coast. And Benina, Badinas, assures us that a customary, a custom so contrary to the law of nations was practiced in his time in Ethiopia and even in Muscovy. This is at once a violation of the rights of individuals and of those of the state to which they belong. Things have been greatly changed in Russia in a single reign that of Peter the Great has placed the vast empire in the rank of civilized nations. Yeah, baby. Civics and jurisprudence, baby. That's what it's about. We teach law around here. Law of Nations, Book 2, 132. Innocent Passage. The introduction of property cannot be supposed to have deprived nations of the general right of traversing the earth. Oh, I like that. I like hearing that one. The introduction of property cannot be supposed to have deprived nations of the general right of traversing the earth for the purposes of mutual intercourse, of carrying on commerce. That's why I don't care when people talk to me about my commercial activities with other moors. Because so long as your conscious mind is all right with the Mutual agreement between us, I'm at peace too. It's a pleasure to be building with you more. It's about high time. Yeah. They want us to be building and doing commerce with everyone else. Like, I'm not even talking to corporations anymore. I ain't writing them jokers. I'm sitting here um, creating trust and building commodities and goods with nationals all around the land. I ain't got time to be talking to a dead thing. The corpse is dead. Come on with it. Uh, for the purposes of mutual intercourse. Of carrying on commerce with each other. Woo! And for other just reasons. It is only on particular occasions when the owner of a country. Now listen. Who the owner of this country? The collective Asiatic nation. The mind. The collective being. The whole people. As a unified body. That is the owner of our Morocco. Three quarters of the earth. Woo! Come on with it family. Oh, you're always talking. One drop of genetic DNA Moore's blood. Well, if all the patriarchs conquered five out of the seven continents and they got with all the matriarchs from all the different tribes, including Albion and European and uh, British or whatever, then it's safe to say that genetically speaking, five of uh, 90 percent of all the inhabitants of the earth have our Moroccan blood in it. Moabite blood, Asiatic blood, whatever. So stop tripping on some of your Albion folk because they a little bit more fair skinned than you as well. Woo, because I get those calls too. Well, because my mother's a European, I can't be a Moor. What? Do you see how blue your father is, boy? What are you talking about? <laughs> boy, your father's so blue. Look, it takes two genetics. Uh... When the owner of a country thinks it would be prejudicial or dangerous to allow a passage through it, that he ought to refuse permission to pass. He is therefore bound to grant a passage for lawful annex, for lawful purposes, whenever he can do it without inconvenience to himself. And he cannot lawfully annex burdensome conditions to a permission which he is obligated to grant and which he cannot refuse if he wishes, wishes to discharge his duty and not abuse his right of property. The Count of Lupin, having improperly stopped some merchandise to Alsace, and complaints being made on the subject of the Emperor Sigismund, who was then at the Council of Constance, that prince assembled the electors, princes, and deputies of towns to examine the affair. The opinion of the Burgrave of Nuremberg deserved to be mentioned. God said he has created heaven for himself and his saints, and has given the earth to mankind, intending it for, be the, intending it for the advantage of the poor as well as the, of the rich. The world are there. The roads are for their use, and God has not subjected them to any taxes. He condemned the Count of Lufton to restore the merchandise and to pay costs and damages, because he could not justify his seizures by any particular right. The emperor approved this opinion and passed sentence accordingly. Oh, and you still sitting in that line. That soup kitchen line. 
at the Salvation Army. You still walking up into that um, snap benefit line. You and all of your matriarchs and all of your family is a line right now from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on $203 in SNAP benefits every single month. Now, if a million matriarchs at the first of the month took those 300, 203 SNAP benefits, they have $203 million to work with amongst themselves to be able to do whatever they want with that SNAP. They could SNAP a couple companies with that if they got together with it. But you shouldn't be in that line. You should be sitting with one another, playing seeds, pouring water, Opening up the blinds for the sun and talking to one another and vibrating and growing and not looking for nothing else but love from one another. This is care. Law of Nations, book two, 133. Sureties may be required. But if any apprehensions of danger arise from the grant of liberty to pass through a country, the state has a right to require sureties. The party who wishes to pass cannot refuse them. A passing being only far due to him as it is intended with no inconvenience. And I will. Oh, I was about to forward this. I was about to forward it to the rest of the Nationals on this line. I wasn't even going to read it because I didn't think I was going to get to it. But I found it. We made it. So y'all want to share it up? I know y'all was getting bored, but I found it. So 50 U.S. Code 196, emergency foreign vessel acquisition, purchase or requisition of vessels lying idle in the United States water during any period in which vessels may be requisitioned. Oh, y'all better share this up because this is what uh, this is what's happening right now on the land concerning the law and how it's being used to uh, make you an economic debt slave. Why well, you got to get up every day and go? And drive to some other location and do something for somebody else uh, that's not your estate. That ain't giving you nothing to your babies and nothing. They ain't doing nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you? What are those? <laughs> oh nah, buddy. You better get up and stretch and walk out to some soil on your yard and sing to the birds or something and, and um, filter. Uh, how you say? Distill some water. Look. <laughs> Title four, Social Security Act of 1936. Title V. Grants to states for maternal and child welfare. Ooh, we get into the, we get into the meat and the. Oh no, wait, we get into the veggies and the alkaline water. We out these meat and potatoes, these uh genetically modified foods. Uh, grants to states for maternal and child welfare. Now you're a state in and of your own thirteen commission consuls or people. You're registered or looked at or deemed as your own state. Once you file. And you're registered under your state number, whatever that may be. Oh, it say maternal and child health services allotments to states. Oh, y'all want to get the truth and know how to get your money out of the United States Service Corporation. I'm telling you how to do it right here. Section 502A. Out of the sums appropriated pursuant to Section 501 for each fixed school year of the Secretary of Labor shall allot to each state 20000 and such part of 1,800,000 as he finds that the number of live births in such state bore to the total number of live births in the United States in the latest calendar year for which the Bureau of the Census has available statistics. Beneficial use of fiction law. Beneficial use of fiction of law realized. Number B. Woo. Out of the sums appropriated pursuant to Section 501. For each fiscal year, the Secretary of Labor shall allot to the states 980000 in addition to the allotments made under subsection A, according to the financial need of each state for assistance in carrying out its state plan, as determined by him after taking into consideration the number of live births in such state. Oh, here's a trust. Here's the Secretary of Labor. Labor Secretary right here. Here's the trust. Here's the 13 people. Here's the estate. Here's the state. Here's the laws proclaiming that they are a state. Oh, here's the witness of a whole bunch of family members all over El Morocco. All of these witnesses. Oh, here's some pictures of some consuls and some family members too. Look at those cute babies right there. Oh, on the secretary, labor secretary's uh, desk. Oh, family, civics and jurisprudence, competent heirs, submitted the proper paperwork, labor secretary, check to them. Bam. What are you saying to me? And the picture of the check that was issued by them is in the previous post of this live. Love you. Yeah. Uh. 46 U.S. Code 56305. Vessel encumbrance. In general, the existence of an encumbrance on a vessel does not prevent the requisition of the vessel under this chapter. 
B. Department and Treasury. In general, if an encumbrance exists, the Secretary of Transportation may deposit, may deposit part of the compensation or advance of compensation to be paid under this chapter, but not more than the total amount of all encumbrance in a fund in the Treasury. The Secretary shall publish notice of the creation of the fund in the Federal Register. Come on with it. That's right, Zena Williams. Let's tell the truth about what these people be doing. Yeah. 50 U.S. Code 192. Seizure and forfeiture of vessel, fine and imprisonment. Withhold of clearance. Withholding of clearance in general. Now y'all ready? If any owner, agent, master, officer, or person in charge of a vessel is liable for a penalty, penalty or fine under subsection C of this section. Or if reasonable cause exists to believe that the owner, agent, master, officer, or person in charge may be subject to a penalty or fine under this section, the secretary may, with respect to such vessel, refuse or revoke any clearance required by section 60105 of Title 46. Yeah, my sincere. Peace and love to you. I appreciate you as well. Uh, seven, eight. 46. Clearance upon filing or bond or other surety. Man, you got to have backbone doing this work. Uh, when I was serving the Lord or, you know, loving people or giving unconditionally or trying to come into understanding uh, the unconditional spirit and why I was serving all these people and giving myself to everybody and with them just like uh, rejecting me and neglecting me and treating me like I wasn't serving them and giving them myself to me. Well, I seen in the churches... Here's what I'm doing, this law. But then you have to apply the knowledge that you get. Well, if you're just sitting there with it just in the air, like, and we don't know what to do with it, well, it's not going to heal it, heal your body. When something go into your body, your brain say, oh, I know you. You're supposed to go here and do that with those cells. Well, it's the same thing with this law. Appreciation to you, brother. We have to enforce this law. Um, where are we? Six, seven. Refuse or revoke any clearance required by Section 601-105, Title 46. Number two, clearance upon filing of bond or other surety. The secretary may require the filing of a bond or other surety as a condition of granting clearance refused or revoked under this subsection. I didn't know for the last 20 years while I was in those churches serving. But I know when I woke up to the truth, these eight months, I'm not going to live no lie. You won't catch me claiming airship after 105 years and me walking past these mansions, these houses, this land, all of these fields, all of these plush everything growing around. And I ain't walking up and eating that stuff and enjoying the privileges of it. If I say I'm an heir, I will be enjoying this stuff. I'm not about to send another writ or affidavit. I'm going to walk up in with these processes and truths and do my thing. Woo, like the air I am. Where you at? Where you at, heirs? You got all the loose and all the, uh, uh, all the laws, and you still getting up going every day to work for the corporations. What? Oh, no, nah, buddy. Uh-uh. Let me tell y'all what I'm doing. I got 13 mothers ready to go. Family members, consuls, whatever you want to say. We're going to take the law. We're going to source unoccupied homes and mansions and whatever else that's available for us to sit and grow like we're supposed to be doing. Just vibrating with one another, growing and healing, and then dispersing that healing energy into the earth. We're going to walk into that um, mansion and we're going to care for one another and enforce the law. And whoever comes through going to be healed and happy Woo! and enjoy. Yeah, that's our strength. Uh. 46 U.S. Code 6, uh, 601105, Clearance of Vessels. Regulations. The Secretary may, by regulation, prescribe the manner in which clearance under this section is to be obtained, including the documents, data, or information which shall be submitted or transmitted pursuant to an authorized data interchange system to obtain the clearance. So y'all need to be talking to the Secretary of State. Secretary General, Secretary of State, all the secretaries. Go find the Secretary. <laughs> and tell them to do their job, buddy. <laughs> Come on, do your duty, buddy. Come on, get off your seat. Taxpayers paying you for no reason. Permit clearance 
to be obtained before all requirements for clearance are compiled with. But only if the owner or operator of the vessel files a bond. Listen, you are the owner and operator of your vessel. But only if the owner and operator of the vessel files a bond in the amount set by the secretary condition on the compliance by the owner or operator with all specified requirements for clearance within a time period, not, ex not exceeding four business days established by the secretary. And number three, permit clearance to be obtained at a place other than a designated point of entry under conditions the secretary may prescribe. Now, this isn't a uh, rocket scientist. Hey, Mr. Secretary, this building is unoccupied. All of our family is occupying it now. We're operating under 1961 United Nations uh, Vienna Convention rules uh, and the common law of treaties, the treaties of peace, friendship, whatever law you think nature's law. That's what we operating under. We just letting you know what we're doing. I hope that you're having fun on your corporate side. Oh, then they looking at you and then they dead and then they start seeing life and then they want to live. So then they walk over to you and start learning how to live. Oh, and do we see peace in the land? 50 U.S. Code 191 regulation of anchorage and movement of vessels during national emergency. To safeguard against destruction, loss, or injury from sabotage or other subversive acts, accidents, or other causes of similar nature, vessels, harbors, ports, and waterfront facilities in the United States and all territories and water, continental or insular, subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. That's you, people. You're just quiet. You've been, you've been um, uh, speaking like the only one that can speak is the, the pastor or something like You've been hoodwinked or something. Y'all need to talk. Y'all need to speak. Y'all need to be writing. Listen, think about this. One holy book, the Sun Book Papers. There are, there are 2.4 billion people who read or adhere or have some type of allegiance or ties to the Sun Book Papers. That is a writ and an affidavit and a constitutional principle from astrological meanings. Captivated. 30% of the earth. Truths of nations. The Quran. The Holy Quran. The chapter 7. These are writs and affidavits. Capturing the whole world. What is your truth going to do when you write it? Ooh. That's if you do though. Write the vision and make it plain. Um, I've been writing visions for 10 years. And I just found out that. Nothing that I've done in the last 10 years was done for me. I'm starting to give away all of the uh, ministries that I built to people, to just random people, I'm giving them. <laughs> and they're taking them and doing whatever because we have the same hearts. We want to see these babies healed in this next generation. All right. Uh, transfers. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. 14 U.S. Code 3, department in which the Coast Guard operates. In general, the Coast Guard shall be a service in the Department of the Homeland Security, except when operating as a service in the Navy. Yeah, we was hoodwinked, but the but the uh, the world is off now, baby. <laughs> I don't know what they talking about. <laughs> Transfers upon the declaration of war. If Congress so directs in the declaration or when the president directs, the Coast Guard shall operate as a service in the Navy and so... And, and shall so continue until the president, by executive order, transfers the Coast Guard back to Department of Homeland Security. While operating as a service in the Navy, the Coast Guard shall be subject to the orders of the Secretary of the Navy, who may order changes in the Coast Guard operations to render them uniform to the extent such Secretary deems advisable with Navy operations. Yeah. This is page 9 of 16, and I want to I want to finish this with y'all. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna this is this is what the work does. It's gonna finish it. Um This is page 8. I believe that the Coast Guard's move to the Department of Homeland Security would be now listen, the Coast Guard is now at the Department of Homeland Security. The process in my community, brother OT Bay. Ma Shasir. Um uh, contact me. I'm going to email you 11 writs and affidavits that have been already PDF. If you want me to seal them, I will seal them for you. Then I'm going to mail them to you, and then you're going to 
video conference me and sign them. Once you sign them, you're going to put everybody on notice in your republic. Hey, this is my bloodline and these 13 are my family members and we're operating as a consulate. And this is the 1961 Vienna Convention. Now you see everything we're doing. And then operate, Mosley. Issue your um, identification cards. Create them. Create, uh, 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 how should I say this? Stand in the gap. So Moors in your republic going through these uh, stupid tribunals, be standing in the gap. Get your team together. Woo, the training is there. The training is there. All of these groups, all of these videos, all of these documents is all there. How should you start? Hook up with us. And then bring your family. Bring your friends and your family. Woo, we having a celebration, baby. Yeah. Come on with it. Where am I at? Oh, y'all got to talk to the Coast Guard. Move to the Department of Homeland Security will be another one of those developments as that as a result, the Coast Guard will be even better prepared to promote public safety, protect the environment, and defend the economic and security interests of the United States in the maritime domain. Woo! You ain't never sewn together anything using like um, roots and like the leaves. You ain't never sewed something together. You make a boat, baby, and you get... You, you take the oar and you get out on the boat and you fish. Come on, man. You talk about you hungry. Why go to Walmart? It's fresh. Well, you know, a lot of them are like <laughs> mutated. All the chemicals in the water. But it's still some good fish out there. It's still some good fruit on them trees. Y'all can go eat. Y'all do not need Walmart. I'm telling you, it's okay. Look, I know it's so convenient. I sent my email. Look, I'm right here with you. Come on with it. Let me find it. What's your email? Because I'll bring you up right now and send you all of this. Because I do the work. We need to heal these babies and get these families together. Um, initiate purchase sequence. I'm, t I'm telling y'all how to initiate purchase sequence of your own bonds, your bonding instruments. Libra Code Article 2. Martial law does not cease during the hostile occupation except by peaceful proclamation ordered by the commander-in-chief. Or by special mention in the Treaty of Peace concluding the war. When the occupation of a place or territory continues beyond the conclusion of peace as one of the conditions of the same. Each one negotiates his peace, which is basically arranged. I got I got to I got to repeat this for y'all. Each one negotiates his peace, which is basically arranged one's affairs to best see, suit one's needs. Not 1863 Banking Act intent. Is that puppy? Yeah. Right, I'm I'm on training right now. Give me in the DM. I got you. And that email after this teaching, I'm gonna send you everything you need, and we gonna treat. Now, um, I'm being transparent. Yes, I do charge. I charge for sitting on this phone for hours and counseling people concerning law. I charge for um preparing the documentation. I charge because it takes ink. And cost, I ain't got no affidavit and no writ to walk up into Office Max and get this ink to be able to print these documents for everybody. I ain't got there yet. I ain't got the writs and the affidavits to go and keep this electricity on yet. Because, quiet as kept, uh, somebody from the Great Seal just told me that that a a two 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 one four one them Comcast people ain't accepting that. These corporations ain't accepting these paperwork. They still shutting your lights off, your electricity off, and everything that got to do with you. Touching your natural resources all day long. It don't matter how much paperwork you send them. They ain't listening to you. Or they might listen to one or two nationals in republics who understand the law, but not the whole of the body. So we the whole of the body need a new cure other than sending all of these written affidavits in all the time. I don't have no problem with doing that so you can declare, but you need to do that in your action as a family. You can send this paperwork in concerning us being a nation all you want, but if you ain't operating as a family on the land and actually and uh, uh, demonstrating the truths in the paperwork... That's null and void anyway. Don't nobody believe you. You don't believe you. <laughs> sure. Uh, Law of Nations Book 2. 105, Their Duties. From a sense of gratitude for the protection granted to him and the other advantages he affords, the foreigner ought not to content himself with barely respecting the laws of the country. Oh, we already got that one. They must have did it even further. Good. They wanted to reiterate this. He ought to assist in upon occasion and contribute to its offense as far as is consistent with his duty as citizen of another state, such as the father's kingdom. 
We shall see elsewhere what he can and ought to do when the country is engaged in war. Yeah. Hague, Article 43, Essential Task. Restore public order, order and safety. This is the International World Court. The World Court has already issued these decrees. And we can hold them to the decrees that they've already issued. It's a restore public order and safety from U.S. Army doctrine and belligerent occupation. You got belligerent occupiers out here right now that you can use this on. The first essential task is to reform, pu restore public order and safety. Allows the occupant and the local inhabitants to form an agreement to maximize their benefits to both. Oh, really? Geneva Convention, Article 5. Inhabitants of the country who may bring help to the wounded shall be respected and shall remain free. The generals of the... That's why I ain't been in Facebook jail yet. A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all be getting put in Facebook jail. Eight whole months I've been on this thing. And I done talked about defending yourself against policy abusers. I done talked about uh, banding together. I done talked about walking down the courtrooms and knocking on them, knocking on the doors. I done talked about arresting policy enforcers. And I ain't never been to Facebook jail. <laughs> but y'all getting thrown in the Facebook jail all the time. <laughs> oh, because I made a post. What? That's because, what I say? Uh... Inhabitants of the country who may bring help to the wounded shall be respected and shall remain free. Oh, come on with it. The generals of the belligerent powers shall make it their care to inform the inhabitants of the appeal addressed to their humanity and of the neutrality, which will be the consequence of it. Any wounded man entertained and taken care of in a house shall be considered as a protection thereto. Any inhabitant who shall have entertained wounded men in his house shall be exempted from the courting of troops, as well as from a part of the contributions of war, which may be imposed. Woo! Uni United Nations, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 7. Shemira Dove, thank you for your light working. It has kept me during times of trials and tribulations and attacks. And for getting on the phone with me and just caring enough to say, how you doing? Woo, how you doing? Hm, thank you very much. Very well. Uh, yes, you are doing well. Everything in your life right now. I'm telling you, while you on this live, it's okay. Are equal before the law and are entitled without any discrimination to equal protection of the law. Are entitled to equal protection against any discrimination and violation of this declaration and against any incitement to such discrimination. Ooh. Declaration of Independence and for the support of this declaration with the firm reliance on the protection of divine providence we mutually pledge to each other our lives our fortunes and our sacred honor say it again Woo! let me get it Declaration of Independence and for the support of this declaration with firm reliance on the protection of divine providence we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortune, and our sacred honor. Woo! Come on with it. Is there any way I can get help, get my birth certificate and social security card so I can get my status corrected? That comes with a simple declaration that I will send you in an email and or mail to your particular domicile location. Every citizen has a right to a name and a nationality. So when you say my name is, when you say I am dot dot dot, the whole world has to respect that. Come on with it. Yeah. Who are you? Rodney giving his best black mon bay. Good to see you. US, uh, UCC 3-305. A. Except as otherwise provided in this section, the right to enforce the obligation of a party to pay an instrument is subject to the following. The right. Huh? To enforce the obligation of a party. Huh? What party? United States Service Corporation. The occupiers of this land. What party? To pay an instrument is subject to the following. A defense of the obligor based on infancy of the obligor to the extent it is a defense to a simple contract. Number two, the rest lack of legal capacity or illegality of the transaction, which under other law nullifies the obligation of the obligor. Ooh. 
UCC 3-306. A person taking an instrument other than a person having rights of a holder in due course is subject to a claim of property or possessory right in the instrument or its proceeds, including a claim to rescind a negotiation and to recover the instrument or its proceeds. A person having rights of a holder in due course takes free of the claim to the instrument, baby. Woo! Your instrument gives you all rights to all claims, to all benefits of all the inheritance of your estate. Florida Statute 648-442, especially 1D. Other acceptable forms of security or indemnity may consist of the following. Any uniform commercial code filing. Oh, think Prophet Nubal Drew Ali knew that when he put that 1099 in. Bet you he did. Repudiation, the rejection or refusal of a duty. Relation, right, or privilege. Repudiation of a contract means a refusal to perform the duty or obligation owed to the other party. Oh, let me see what the refusal is. They don't want to pay the sagat. They don't want to pay the tribute. It loathes them to pay the tribute. They owe your bloodline for teaching them what it took to become civilized in the world. Those sciences, cleaning them up, teaching them the arts and the spiritual aspects of things. So they pay tribute and that's okay. And they was happy to do that, to keep up with the sciences and to learn new things. But now they hate paying the tribute. And most of the, how should you say this? Dark priesthood think they got the 411 on the sciences. It can't no more relative information from the cosmos be communicated to other more scientists in the world. Woo! But buddy, I thank the universe. For saying to me and communicating with me through my telomeres. Y'all go research telomeres. And it will show you what you need in order to heal them. So that your uh, strands of DNA could be receptive to the communicative frequency of your ancestral spirits. UCC 2-610. When either party repudiates the contract with respect to a performance not yet due the loss of which will substantially impair the value of the contract to the other. The aggrieved party may. Ooh, for a commercially reasonable time await performance by the repudiated party or resort to any remedy breach section 2-307 or section 2-711 did you get my email OT Bay where did you send it um, Sean Malcolm X Sean if you sent it to um, COC Central Amexum at gmail.com yes I did and or resort to any remedy for breach, even though he has notified the repudiating party that he will await the latter's performance, has urged retraction. And El Bay Neo X, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. In either case, suspend his own performance or proceed in accordance with the provisions of this article on the seller's right to identify goods to the contract, notwithstanding breach or to salvage unfinished goods. Oh, y'all getting real code, real law, and real civics and jurisprudence today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the comment feed. I'm going to go back into it and send you what's needed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got you covered. Uh, where's this at? Where did I just go to? UCC 2-307. Where the buyer wrongfully rejects or revokes exception, acceptance of goods or fails to make a payment due on or before delivery or repudiates with respect to a part or the whole, then with respect to any goods directly affected, and if the breach of the whole contract, then also with the respect to the whole undelivered balance, the, aggr the aggrieved seller may withhold delivery of such goods, stop delivery by any bailey as hereafter provided, proceed under the section respecting goods still identified to the contract, resell and recover damages as hereafter provided. Y'all gonna love this. In this article, unless the context otherwise requires contract and agreement are limited to those relating to the present or future sale of goods. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What y'all talk about? What, you what you talk about, Willis? UCC 2-106. Uh, 1-201-29. Uh, Purchase means... Taking by sale, lease, discount, negotiation, mortgage, pledge, lien, security interest, issue or reissue, gift or any other voluntary, voluntary, let me make that a point, voluntary transaction creating an interest in property. See Declaration of Independence Pledge.
Oh, really? UCC 9-102. As extracted collateral means oil in your soil, baby. Gas in your ether realm or wherever the gas is existing right now. It all belongs to you. Or other minerals that are subject to a security interest. That is created by a debtor having an interest in the minerals before extraction and attaches to the minerals as extracted. And the maximum of law is you own the soil, you own all the way up to the sky. And what's in the soil? Woo, come on. Just dig in the ground. And you got some, wor you got some worth. You got some wealth in the ground. Woo, come on with it. Sabrine. Oh, that's my matriarch. Yes, I'm going to send you all of these documents. I had to uh, get my team together. Some of them, you know, we be going through things until we unify. Uh, that's our problem. We, I'm, I've been, I've been, come together, get together, unify. Let's speak as one voice. Let's speak as a family. Just now, the matriarch called me. They gonna send for me so I can uh, do Central and Mexico, the whole adjoining islands. Oh yeah, we're about to nationalize. I spoke it out of my mouth. My word, word will not come back to me, boy. Uh, extracted collateral means accounts arising out of the sale at the wellhead or mine head of oil, gas, or other minerals in which the debtor had an interest before extraction. Anika Thomas. Oh, yeah. Praise be to Allah. I say, Allah Akbar. And the woman at the uh, bank, she from Morocco, she said, you're not supposed to say that. I said, what am I supposed to say? She said, you're supposed to say praise God. I said, ain't that what I said? Oh, Allah Akbar. That means the same thing as Anything else? Oh, Allah mean God in Arabic. They didn't tell you that in the Christian church. Oh, they didn't. <laughs> they thought you. They thought it was a curse and made you think it was evil. <laughs> Come on with it. Libra Code, Article One Thirty Four. The commander of an occupying army may require of the civil officers of the enemy and of its citizens any pledge he may consider necessary for the safety or security of his army, and upon their failure to give it, he may arrest, confine, or detain them. What is what is this saying? Okay. So all these belligerent trustees all around the land keep on getting belligerent. And all of the nationals like, ah, uh, we ain't going to be dealing with this no more. And the occupying commander of the occupying army at the present moment is General Ham, 2014 Civil Order, Grand Army Republic. He say, oh, I know these, I know these nationals get itchy. Man, I'm starting to feel it. I, this intel's telling me, oh, it might be a civil war. Between who? Between the heirs and the belligerent occupiers that the heirs are tired of being abused by. Woo! So with the commander, since he don't want bloodshed on the soil of any land, does, is he goes to his belligerent. And he say, hey, buddy, these citizens are getting tired of you abusing them. And they're going to take up and be defending themselves. And I'm telling you, I don't need that to happen to my soldiers on this land. So what's your oath? What's your duty? What's your responsibility, soldier? Occupying military enforcer in this land What's your responsibility If that person doesn't do what the Grand Army Republic says Or the marshals, the United States marshals Or the appointed sheriffs Boy, did you see these Libra codes? <laughs> Lawfully killed on spot Deportation, fine Imprisonment, what Look, <laughs> I will enforce it <laughs> I have no problem I have no problem having it enforced on me all my life and then being gifted to be able to enforce it. What you thought? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And love the matriarchs and love the babies while I'm doing it. Ooh, and y'all see this? Look at this link. Ooh, look at this link. It took me uh, three whole months. I was paying and then I was trying to do it myself. And then I found somebody that knew how to do it. Oh, yeah. I'm checking this thing, boy. And I'm touching get my uh, locks on deck. Uh, I got you. I'm coming back on. I'm almost done. Uh, UCC 3-301. Negotiation means a transfer of possession, whether voluntary, voluntary or involuntary, of an instrument by a person other than the issuer to a person who therefore, therefore becomes its holder. If you're going to use UCC whatevers, always write that the use of the UCC it's not an adhesion contract. Always write that. It's not adhesing you to any contract. You're just using it because that's the law that they have to abide by. Negotiation is in effect 
even if attained from an infant, a corporation exceeding its powers, or a person without capacity by fraud, duress, or mistake, or in breach of duty, or as part of an illegal transaction. Negotiation is effective even if obtained. Oh, really? That's how my contractual agreement got enforced. Oh, <laughs> without my consent. Little baby mind said, yeah, <laughs> didn't know nothing. <laughs> of the same, of the person making the same, exact same text found in Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917. Now, what I just read to you, UCC 2-703, that um, same exact text is located in Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917. Let me see here. 11, 12. That UCC 3-302. And I'm seeing Social Security Act of 1936 grants and grants to states for maternal and child welfare. Okay. So it looks like this is going through some of the same stuff. Later on, 11, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay, so I guess I'm going to give y'all part two within the next hour. Uh, I love y'all very much. Thank you for staying with me. We on page 13 and 16. Get me some water and something to eat and be right back to you. Woo! Peace and love. And until the next time, be joyful. Yeah, and unite. Go talk to your family.